Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking cron jobs. Now, if you don't know what a cron job is, it's a way to automate something. For example, maybe you have a weekly email that you need to dispatch from your application and you just want to automate that process. Cron jobs were made popular to do those kinds of boring tasks that nobody wants to go and do, such as gather data from an API and then send it out. So we're going to be using GitHub Actions here, and I'm not going to show how to set the API up because I'm using a example API that I've used previously in a few applications. It's just a simple API that sends an email to my email address. And what we're going to do is we're going to modify that and make it work with GitHub Actions as a cron job that will run every 15 minutes. Now, this is an introduction and isn't a production ready example, but does give you an idea of how cron jobs work with Next.js and the Jamstack. So let's get in and start digging around in the cron jobs. I've created a Next.js application that currently has a single API endpoint called send email that basically sends an email to my email from my email. So here we have content and inside of here we have the from subject HTML and the recipients. So this could be an example of a weekly email, for example. And every week this email gets dispatched with maybe some statistics or maybe it's your weekly job that sends an email to remind people to do something in your applications. Now, the problem with this right now is this only works if I call the API. Now that's all well and good in a regular application where I'm gonna use this API quite frequently. But what I want to do is be able to use a cron job to automate this email sending. So I don't have to manually call it and also secure it slightly so that not just anybody can make it, they need to know some sort of API secret to make this request. So cron jobs in Next.js, there are a variety of products you can use, but my favorite is GitHub Actions and is kind of preferred if you look at the Next.js documentation. GitHub Actions is up there, but you could also use something like EasyCron, but today we're going to be looking at GitHub Actions. So the way that GitHub Actions works is you create a folder called GitHub and then you create the action in a YAML file. And this YAML file will contain essentially what we want to do with our automation scripts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create those two files and I'm going to tell it, hey, every 15 minutes, I need you to go ahead and call this API point that's deployed through the sale. So first we need to deploy this to the sale to be able to know where to send it, but I'm going to create the functions first so that we have them ready to go. So we need to create a GitHub folder here so we can just do dot GitHub. And inside of here, we can create a new folder called workflows. And then inside of here is where we'll create our YAML file that will take care of our cron job. So we can call this send email dot YAML. So inside of this YAML file is where we need to tell GitHub what to do. So in our example, we want to be able to essentially email every X minutes this set of emails. Now this could be used in example, if you had some sort of weekly analytics or something like that, this is how it would work. So we'll give it a name and email cron. We can give it an on here and then on schedule. And then we're going to tell it cron. And the cron is going to be uh, every 15 minutes, so that means this means 15 minutes. And then we're just gonna do star, 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 star. And this means every 15 minutes all the time versus if you change some of these, you can have 
uh, every day. You could have every other hour, like all sorts of different things. Um, once a day on the 15th minute of the third hour, etc. But for us, we're going to do it every 15 minutes. Then we need to tell it the jobs. So we're going to say cron and then runs on. And then we're going to use von to latest. And then we're going to say steps. And the steps is where the magic actually happens. So we're going to give it name. And the name will be, uh, for this example, we'll just say call our API route. And then run. And then we need to tell it to essentially make a curl request to our endpoint. So we do curl request and it needs to be a post uh, and we'll do URL and we'll do HTTPS and then localhost 3000. I know this is intentionally going to fail, but we need to deploy our application out first before I can put the correct URL in here. But I want to make sure at least I have some sort of URL in here. And then we need a slash and then underneath the URL we need header and then the header will be authorization bearer and we need a colon here and then in here we'll have uh, secrets dot your API key and we can hit save. So let's talk about this one more time. As I was typing and talking at the same time, I want to make sure you understand. So this is a cron job and we've scheduled it to run every 15 minutes. We're telling it that this cron job, it needs to run on this latest version of Ubuntu. And then we need to call our API route. Now the curl request is going to make a call to this API send email. And it's also going to include this authorization bearer token that we're going to pass in. Now, the reason behind this is I want to be able to secure this API endpoint so that only this job can actually call it and somebody else can't just come along with the URL and start spamming the send email. So now we have this, we're going to hit save and I'm going to deploy this by pushing to GitHub and have Russell deploy it for me. And then we can go into GitHub. I can show you what the actions looks like and we can add this secret API endpoint. And then on top of that, we can come back in here, make a few changes to the send email here to secure it down and get it ready for use with our cron job. And then we can finally deploy it one more time. And then we can test to make sure the cron job works. So I'll meet you on the other side. So here we are in our GitHub repository and we are in the action section. And you can see that this is the cron job that we just wrote. So what we need to do is actually create a uh, API secret here. So you can go to settings and then secrets and then new repository secret, give it a name and then give it a value. So we'll call it your super secret value. And we'll click, let's copy that first and click add secret. Now this is now available to our actions here. So it will start to use those as we need them. It's currently failing because obviously you can't hit localhost. So let's go uh, back now into our application. Now it's deployed to GitHub and Vercel, make some changes and test our cron job. So back in the send email YAML file, we need to make sure that we change this to the URL of our Vercel app which is here, HTTPS, Brazil app, API, send email, and hit save. Once we've done that, we can make changes to this JS file to secure the endpoint and get it ready to be used with our cron job. So now we have this, we need to make sure we have a few things. So I've placed that uh, API key in here to be used in our application. And so what we're going to do is make some changes here so we can create an auth secret, which is going to equal that 
uh, API key that I dropped in here. So your API key. And remember, this API key needs to match what you put in your secrets in GitHub so that we can make a check to make sure that they match. Now you can ignore this part. Um, and if you want an, uh, a tutorial on how to send emails through APIs, please let me know in the comments below. I'll happily show you how to do client transmissions through SparkPost, which is a much better option than say SendGrid. Uh, so now we need to get the header and we need to get the uh, auth token from that header. So we can do a const here and say auth header equals request headers dot authorization and then do auth token which can come from the above auth header and then we can split it because it will have the bearer token and then the actual token. Um, so we can split that on a space and then ask for the first in the array, which will give us the second, which will be the actual API key. Now we can hit save here. And now we can just do a simple if statement wrapped around our client transmission that says if auth token equals auth secret then we can do all of this so this essentially just sends an email and we'll just change this to let's say cron jobs rule and hit save so that you know when we check the email that that's the name of it currently and then underneath this wrap here, we can just do a simple else statement and the else will just say res status code, set it to 400 and then we'll send back unauthorized and then hit save. So those are all the changes that we're going to need to do this cron job. So we've got this YAML file that's going to make a request to our deployed application. And it's going to send down that API key that we placed in the GitHub secrets. Then our email is going to first look for this authorization, split it. And then if this auth token that we're sending from the GitHub action matches the auth secret, we can then send the email to wherever it's supposed to go. Else, we'll send a 400 back and say it's unauthorized. So we're going to deploy this out, and then we're going to wait for the job to run. I'll show you what it looks like successfully in GitHub Actions, and then I'll show you what it looks like in the emails. So I've run the email cron job, and you can see it set the job up, and then it called the API route using the, the curl command that we gave. And then you can see at the bottom, error null, which is the error that I placed on there so I could see what happened if there was no error message. Now what I'm gonna do is check the actual email and see if we got the email that we're expecting. And here's the email successfully sent to us from the email jamesperkins.dev, cron drop file successfully, and I put my name at the end. So you can see that setting up a cron job is actually not too complex in the Next.js world. You just have to think the API routes similar to any server and then setting the cron job up through different means such as GitHub Actions or Easy Cron and using that to make the API requests or whatever you need to do. So that's the end of the video. If you did enjoy the video on cron jobs, please comment, like, subscribe as all of those things help in the algorithm which allows this channel to grow. Until next time, see ya.